What if I told you that one of the most powerful tools in seismic interpretation is essentially measuring the loudness of seismic waves? Today we're diving deep into the RMS amplitude, a very common mathematical algorithm that's behind mapping energy in seismic reflection data. RMS emerged as one of the earliest seismic attributes, gaining a lot of prominence back in the 1970s with the advent of digital seismic processing. It's computationally efficient and it's got very robust results that make it a standard tool in seismic interpretation, particularly for hydrocarbon exploration. I'm Heather Beadle from the University of Oklahoma. All right, so from reservoir characterization to structural mapping, this seemingly simple calculation has had a huge impact in how we understand all of those rocks beneath our feet. And the mathematics may look intimidating, but let's break it down into a single trace attribute. So for each point in our seismic data, we're taking a window of samples, we're gonna square each value, and then we're gonna find their average and take the square root. So as a basic concept, RMS amplitude is the root mean square of seismic data within a specific time window. So you can think about it as measuring the average strength of the seismic signal but with a little bit of a mathematical twist that makes it particularly useful for geoscientists. In this example, we are looking at the amplitude in the window from the top of the formation to the base. And if we link higher RMS amplitudes to perhaps sandier facies or maybe hydrocarbons, we would interpret those channels are filled of something that we may be interested in. So let me share where RMS amplitude really is valuable. So first and foremost, it's invaluable when you're trying to map higher amplitude packages around noisy horizons. It helps cut through the noise to reveal the true signal. Second, it's a powerful tool for identifying amplitude anomalies that could indicate hydrocarbon presence. Third, it serves as an excellent quality control check during seismic processing. And finally, it's become an essential tool in sequence stratigraphy interpretation helping us in understand depositional patterns and environments. So while you can calculate RMS from a top to a base horizon that you picked, you can also automate that calculation and pick it over a window. So for any given time sample, we can define a window, typically a few milliseconds above and below our point of interest. Um, this is an example from the Great South Basin in New Zealand, which shows a standard window of about plus or minus 20 milliseconds, but you can adjust this based upon your needs. And you can see it does a nice job of highlighting some potentially interesting amplitudes um, that are deeper and probably aren't as apparent in the seismic amplitude data by itself. So here we have an example of a slightly smaller window that we're doing the calculation over. And you can notice that there are much more brighter kind of light greenish amplitudes, as those aren't being averaged out quite as much as they were when you had a longer time window. So you can have much more detail depending on the window that you pick. So while modern software has simplified the RMS amplitude calculations into just a few clicks, <laughs> um, the success that you have with this attribute really hinges on understanding three key parameters. So first, you need to carefully select your window size based on what you're trying to detect. If it's too small, you might pick up some noise, too large of a window, and you might miss some important details. Second, you always wanna keep your sampling rate in mind of your seismic data because that directly affects your temporal resolution. And finally, and this is really crucial, you always wanna pay attention to your input data quality. So remember, even the most sophisticated RMS calculation or any seismic attribute can't overcome poor quality input data. So let me end with two notes. First, to remember that RMS is the square root of the average of the squares just by definition. And this means that RMS is very sensitive to outliers because you're squaring it. So just saying it again, quality control is very important and make sure you check over your data first. So to conclude, RMS amplitude is actually quite straightforward when you break it down. We take all the amplitudes in our analysis window, square them, find their average, and then take the square root. 
And so what I want to end with is just I encourage you to try this attribute out if you haven't already, because it's really excellent at highlighting high amplitude anomalies in your seismic data. Thanks, and you can find more information on our website about RMS amplitude attributes as well as many other attributes.